Although many think of CBD as reducing pain, inflammation, stress, anxiety, this is one avenue of research which is really developing into an interesting, uh, how to describe it, potential treatment in reference to Alzheimer's. Now what the research does here is two things. Number one, please keep in mind, this is a pilot study and it's conducted in animals. So it's an experimental model. However though, it does two things. It shows a successful outcome in basically resolving some of the issues in reference to familial Alzheimer's. Although the research also allude to that it can also work just as well for non-familial Alzheimer's. Number two, it yields the mechanism of action that CBD has on certain particular elements that help with clearing out of debris and keeping basically the brain operating at a normal functioning pace, or I should say state. But let us get into the research as follows. So we're not gonna be talking dosages, only the potential for CBD in the treatment of certain conditions in reference to Alzheimer's. So let us begin as follows. CBD reduces plaque, improves cognition in model of familial Alzheimer's. A two week course, that is a real brief uh, period of time. A two week course of high doses of CBD helps restore the function of two proteins key to reducing the accumulation of beta amyloid plaque, a hallmark of Alzheimer's disease and improves cognition in the experimental model of early onset familial Alzheimer's investigators report. We're just gonna read right through because they say it best. The proteins, TREM2, otherwise known as triggering receptor expressed on myeloid cells 2, and interleukin-33, IL-33, are important to the ability of the brain's immune cells to literally consume dead cells and other debris like beta amyloid plaque that piles up in the patient's brains, and the levels of both, the TREM2 and interleukin-33, are decreased in Alzheimer's. Now, introducing CBD to proceed. CBD also improves expression, or tr expression of triggering receptor expressed in myeloid cells 2, or once again, TREM2, which is found on the cell surface where it combines with another protein to transmit signals that activate cells, including immune cells. In the brain, its expression is on the microglial cells, a special population of immune cells found only in the brain, where they are key to eliminating, evading the evaders, such as a virus, and irrevocably damaged neurons. Low levels of TREM2 and rare variations in TREM2 are associated with Alzheimer's and their mouse model, TREM2 and interleukin-3, were both low. I'm going to move a little bit down to the study so you basically get to, get to the conclusion, the outcome, to proceed. Both are essential to a natural ongoing housekeeping process in the brain called phagocytosis, in which microglial cells regularly consume beta amyloid which is regularly produced in the brain, the result of the breakdown of amyloid beta precursor protein, which is important to the synapses or connection points between neurons in which plaque interrupts. They found CBD treatment increased the levels of interleukin-33 and TREM2 sevenfold and tenfold respectively. To repeat, to reiterate, they found CBD treatment. Now, now look, we're only looking at a two-week trial, or two-week, uh, I should say, trial it was an, an animal model experimental again not having a dosage for human here but still looking at the outcome they found cbd treatment increased levels of interleukin 33 and trem2 sevenfold and tenfold respectively after 14 days now again if the company wants to mention for example i'm about to uh, allude to in the study here if they want to put a link uh in reference to their studies they're more than welcome to but until then, I'm really reluctant to mention the name of any companies per se, uh, for various reasons. But to proceed as follows. A company has developed both animal and human inhalers for the investigators who have also been exploring CBD's effect on the Adult Respiratory Distress Syndrome, or ARDS. Trigger some bells. A buildup of fluid in the lungs is a major deadly complication of COVID-19. Keep in mind, our research here, we're looking at the outcome in reference to familial Alzheimer's. However, though, they are alluding to its benefit in other arenas as well to validate 
some of the impact it has in this model, as well as other serious illnesses like sepsis and major trauma. The CBD doses used for Alzheimer's study were the same the investigators successfully used to reduce cytokine storm of ARDS, which can irrevocably damage the lungs. The familial disease is an inherited version of Alzheimer's, which symptoms typically surface, surface in the 30s and 40s and occurs in about 10 to 15 percent of patients. Now to proceed, CBD should be at least equally effective in the more common non-familial type Alzheimer's, which likely have more targets for CBD, the researcher notes. They already are looking at its potential and a model of this more common type and moving forward to establish a clinical trial. I hope it is in people. But to give you an idea, what we're going to do is we are going to link to the abstract itself, even though, for example, you'll notice it costs 27.5 euros in order to purchase access to the full study, still just the same. We're going to link that. And also, too, as a side note, actually on the side panel, you'll notice some other interesting links in reference to studies uh, that kind of validate the path that these researchers are on. Uh, because you'll see other uh, elements in reference to CBD and Alzheimer's and other particular studies as well. So, links will be there. Incredible, incredible promise. I mean, if this could work in familiar Alzheimer's as well as non-familiar Alzheimer's as well, in the method it does in regular humans, that is just an amazing, amazing impact as far as helping basically sustain an individual uh, from the ravages of this particular uh, horrendous ailment. But again, links will be there for you, and I hope you find this information use. Again, they don't mention dosages here, even though they do allude to that one company, and that company is more than welcome to put a link to the dosages. So our very humble, small, but very well-informed viewer base can basically have access to that data as well. Also do before I leave off, we do the data analytics on Saturday. And I think we're now past the 70 view stage, but still, uh, it's open for you for anybody looking for uh, basically looking at the pandemic mitigation policies and their benefits. If there's any difference at all between certain policies and mitigation strategies or everything's just happening the way it's happening, regardless. But still, you'll see what I mean on Saturday night or Sunday morning, I should say. But it's there for you, too, and you're all welcome as well. But to end the conclusion, CBD in a, I mean, an incredible plethora of potential benefits for something that basically was pretty much in the shadows no more than just a few years ago, now is becoming quite a rising star. Once we begin to remove our biases uh, in basically reference to the execution of CBD treatments. Again, Ralph Channel signing off. Thank you, gratitude, and humbly look forward to you all once again sometime next week. Catch you next time. Bye.